hello everyone so it's been a while since i've made any videos and uh, i will soon uh, have a separate update about our display tank uh, paludarium uh, project with a drip wall and uh, about things happening in the fish room but today i wanted to show how i created this unheated uh, scape so this is uh, our office uh, space uh, sort of a well a uh, room uh, where i work sometimes from home Previously I've tried to uh, put together here a setup with cardinal tethers and checkerboard cichlids but it didn't quite work because uh, this is a very uh, chilly room especially in winter and it's a bit hard to keep an open top tank uh, at a certain temperature in this room so that's that's why that's a reason why I want to create this unheated uh, setup. Uh, this will be a tank with uh, minimum equipment, um, an LED lamp, a no-brand LED lamp, a water pump, and that's it. So, uh, this is a 90 liter, well, 90 something liter shallow tank, and I used it for quite a lot of my scapes before because of its shape. It has a perfect shape to create this shallow, uh, natural looking uh, biotop style scapes. So, this is what I'm going to create here. This will be sort of a southern brazilian pantanal inspired setup not exactly a biotope but something very similar to a biotope so we'll get started uh, i'm going to be working right now on a scape and i'm going to be using uh, some of these pieces of driftwood there's quite a collection of driftwood that i have here none of them is new i have used them in a lot of previous tanks for a number of years and uh, I'm going to see which of them I'm going to be able to use for this scape. And uh, the idea is to create a scape that will have over uh, sort of a overhanging piece of driftwood uh, in order to push some water b from a pump uh, to flow over uh, this uh, piece of driftwood above the water line and uh, to grow possibly some mosses uh, uh, in uh, immersed condition. This tank has some uh, sand in it because uh, I used to have fish in there recently and normally I would prefer to put uh, driftwood or any other hardscape rocks not on a bare bottom but on uh, a piece of uh, floss. This is not a fil filter floss as such, this is just po polystyrene from a pillow, from an old pillow, but it's the same as a filter floss and it will work great to support uh, your hardscape. And the scaping is complete. Initially I thought uh, about using spider wood, uh, which I showed you earlier, but it didn't quite fit well, so I ended up using these two pieces of uh, massive Cornish oak wood. So this is a uh, natural oak and it's very heavy, it sinks right from the start, so there is no need to pre-soak it or anything, so it just stays uh, the way it is. And uh, there is a larger piece up here and uh, there is another piece on the bottom which is not very visible, but uh, I just had to combine them because otherwise this piece is not going to uh, reach the top of the tank. I've added a pump in here in the corner that's just a regular uh, water pump and uh, there is a hose connected to the pump that pushes water up here. All of this part will be covered by moss but uh, as things stand uh, it's a bit too noisy for me so I will now start planting the tank and uh, I will try to make sure that uh, the the sound of the flowing water is not so loud because uh, obviously I don't want it to be so loud. So I have here quite a lot of uh, various types of moss. As it happens in my fish keeping collection of moss, I have different species of aquatic moss mixed up. So this is a uh, uh, Christmas moss, uh, Taiwan moss, spiky moss and uh, something else i at some point i bought like six different species of aquatic moss and uh, ever since they just grow mixed up and uh, in the end i get quite quite a beautiful mixture of moss and this is what i'm going to be uh, using up here so the idea is to actually cover all of this driftwood with moss i don't have any particular plan as to how it should grow or how it should st 
stay attached to the drift wood. The idea is to get it covered. Once it gets established, it will grow beautifully. But for now, it's probably not going to look like much. The most important thing at this point is to make sure that it gets enough water. Well, you can see how much quieter it becomes once I cover all of this with, with moss. If you're wondering why I'm wearing this glove, I just have a small cut on my finger and it doesn't feel very nice when, when I get it into water, in water. Over time this moss will get adapted to this semi-aquatic condition and it will start growing immersed. But for now all of this moss has been growing underwater, so if I don't place it strategically so that it gets enough moisture, it is likely that it will just dry up. I'm quite concerned about this area here because that's the area that produces quite a bit of noise. Well, much quieter now. Uh, the next step are bamboo sticks. I've used these bamboo sticks in my previous scapes. These are natural bamboo sticks. Uh, they don't leach anything. Uh, they can stay in water indefinitely and uh, they basically uh, sink straight away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add them like this, sort of uh, putting them in substrate making sure that they look natural. I will plant in substrate uh, two species of uh, stem plants, uh, Cabomba aquatica and Bacopa carolinana. So with Cabomba I want to plant it somewhere in the back, so it sort of uh, grows in the background, like somewhere here. I have a single piece of dwarf such, which I will sort of get in here. I don't know if it's going to grow or not. And I will plant Bacopa here in the back, hoping that it will sort of spread out eventually and maybe also grow immersed. There will be lots of floating plants on the surface, so I don't know how much light these plants will get, but we'll see. And the last stem plant that I'm going to add to this setup uh, is Hitrocotyle uh, Tripartita Japan. So I've got lots of cuttings here from our main display tank. And obviously they may not grow in here as well as they grow elsewhere in my tanks, but the idea is to add them in here and expect that they will start sort of climbing up these uh, pieces of driftwood and will sort of grow immersed. So we'll kind of be spreading them in here in this fashion. 
Again, no idea whether they will get established and they will do actually what I expect them to do, but it's always worth trying. It looks very chaotic in here at this moment, but it's all about giving these plants some time to get established and uh, providing them with enough light and nutrients so they can start growing. And we'll see what happens. And we have tons of floating plants. There's some Amazon frogbeet and some water lettuce. Some of it is covered with thread algae, you can see here, because it was growing in a tank with a lot of thread algae. So I will have to separate it and sort of clean it in the process. But eventually I don't think this thread algae is going to thrive in here unless it sort of starts growing on its own. So the idea is that the whole upper part of this tank will be covered with floating plants. Again, I don't know whether these floating plants will get established in here because they used to grow in a different tank and as is the case with Amazon frogbeet, for example, it can be a bit sensitive to changes of environment and moving it from one tank to another doesn't always guarantee that it will get established. But because there will be lots of light, I'm hoping that it will grow well. I will be removing some yellow leaves. Later on I'll clean up its roots. So just like for many other people, one of my strategies is to add as many plants as possible at the early stage of scaping and planting and see how it goes. When it comes to water latches, eh, it's not of best quality, but we'll see. Uh, it's been day five and uh, the scape is more or less completed. You, uh, you can see I've added some uh, coconut shells, uh, paranut shells and, and Cariniana pots uh, to the bottom to provide this sort of a network of hiding places for the fish up here. Everything seems to be doing well for now. Well, you can still see the pipe and you can still see uh, this uh, zip tie, white zip tie, which I used uh, to attach this pipe uh, to, to the driftwood. But I'm hoping that as the moss uh, gets established and as it uh, grows, uh, it will get these things covered uh, eventually. Or I'm hoping that uh, Hydrocotyle tripartita, which is in here, will get established as well and eventually will colonize this area. So for now, yes, it's, it's, it's a bit uh, obvious uh, that the pipe is here. But other than that, I'm more or less happy. All of these areas remain wet, which means that this moss will get established and will start growing. On the bottom, there are lots of uh, black worms here. Uh, they they have they have been living in this substrate in the sand which uh, was in a different tank before and uh, because they know that there is no fish they are just uh, feeling themselves uh, sort of free to roam around this is a great thing because the fish which i'm going to add here in a moment will absolutely enjoy their presence right now we're going to add the first inhabitants they have been temperature acclimating in this ice cream tub so I'm going to show you what these fish are. So this is a group of about 10 juvenile dwarf flag acaras, also known as uh, sheep face acara. Latin name is uh, Letacara 
corviceps. They have been born uh, in my fish room a while ago and uh, I'm adding them first because they will be the smallest fish that will live in this fish tank. They're still juveniles uh, so uh, it's always uh, better to add smaller fish first. Uh, the reason why I'm adding this fish here because uh, dwarf flag acaras they originate from southern Brazil and they can handle lower temperatures so they're perfect inhabitants for unheated uh, temperate South American tanks. Uh, if you keep them from uh, this younger age uh, in an unheated tank at lower temperatures, uh, they will be even hardier and they are supposed to have uh, brighter colors and uh, they will live longer. So I hope that they will get established in here. I don't know if all of them will eventually survive, uh, but we'll see if uh, all of them uh, will grow to, mat uh, to maturity. I will probably leave only a pair here and I will rehome the rest of them. So Well, it's been uh, about two weeks since I set up uh, this uh, unheated South American uh, fish tank and uh, now it looks absolutely horrible to be honest. So the moss up here, well in some places it started growing primarily in here where it gets some water but over here it sort of uh, got overtaken by algae because of light obviously. Over there it's almost completely dried up. Floating plants, uh, mixed success. Lots of Amazon frog beads started uh, going bad. So there's lots of rotten leaves and uh, water lettuce, uh, I think doing okay, but needs to be um, trimmed. Uh, well, I need to remove some of them. Uh, driftwood started leaching uh, tannins, so the water is uh, not looking very well. I have added here a black widow tetras and uh, uh, wild uh, bronze quarries, but it's almost impossible to see them because of all the mess inside this fish tank. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to try to fix this situation and try to make this fish tank look a little bit better. Whether I'm going to succeed in that or not, we're going to see now.
and the maintenance is completed. I have removed these bamboo sticks uh, because uh, they've been adding more tannins and I don't want uh, this to be a black water or dark water um, setup and uh, also they were sort of uh, bothering me when I was cleaning the glasses in the back. I've removed some of the floating plants and there's more light going down there so it does look a bit better. I've also changed the direction of this water flow from here to here. Hopefully it will get to all of these areas and this moss will uh, start growing. Uh, there is also a Cabomba aquatica in here which uh, hopefully will start growing as well and um, I'm gonna give this tank another chance and we'll see what happens uh, in probably a month or so so all right I hope you like this video and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet and I will see you soon